Hey everyone, it's Argonath here from The Right Way, and I came across this article from Daily Mail Australia written by Dan Wooten. Uh, Dan is actually a New Zealander, but um, luckily he got out of New Zealand, otherwise he'd be, still be caught in the blatantly biased left-wing mainstream media that we have in New Zealand, and um, luckily he's able to write some really insightful opinion pieces. So this one is about Volodymyr Zelensky, um, and how he puts down most of the Western leaders to shame. Um, it's a really, really interesting article. So it's, it's reasonably long, but um, hopefully you'll bear with me as we read through it because it's really, really good. Oh, how they sniggered when famed physical comic Volodymyr Zelensky. So if you, nef if you didn't know, he was actually a comedian um, before he became president. Was elected president of Ukraine in 2019 with over 70% of the vote on an anti-corruption mandate versus his pro-Russia opponent, the mainstream media treated his elevation as well a bit of a joke. Ukrainians are waking up this morning and discovering that the last few months were not a dream. They really have elected a man who currently stars in a TV series as the president, as the country's next real president. The BBC sneered in the hours after his historic election, having previously described it as clueless. Well, the BBC would say that because the BBC are the actual clueless ones with their left-wing agenda and diversity, um, higher bullshit, all that kind of stuff. So I wouldn't really trust anything the BBC might put out. Commentators were even harsher. The famous Ukrainian writer Oksana Zabusko wrote, I fear an off-screen laugh of scriptwriters who have conjured all of this plot for stupid Ukrainians. No one is laughing at Zelensky now. He has actually been doing some really good things for his country under this onslaught from the crazy Russians. The Ukrainian president has proven he's nothing like our craven modern politicians who don't give a damn about the folk they represent. Just think about that, right? Wherever you are in the world, whether in New Zealand, US, Australia, wherever, just think about your politicians, your local politicians, your federal politicians or country politicians. Would they actually give a shit about any of the folk they represent or do they only care about themselves and their um, agenda and their narrative? Um, that's what mostly it all is in New Zealand. Um, the left-wing people, uh, government here in New Zealand, always talk about, oh, we be kind to the people, all this kind of stuff, but the actions are completely opposite of that, and they do stuff which uh, doesn't help the people of New Zealand. So much so that he's prepared to die alongside his fellow Ukrainians to defend the capital Kiev against the near certain upcoming onslaught from Vladimir Putin. When the 44-year-old received an offer of evacuation from U.S. authorities this weekend, the Russian troops continued to encircle Kiev. He delivered a line straight from a Hollywood action movie, We need ammo, not a ride. What a brilliantly amazing thing to say. I probably wouldn't have the fortitude to do that. Um, you have my utmost respect, Vladimir Zelensky, um, and I hope that you prevail in the end but it's going to be a massive task. Who believes that, that that would be the response from the sniffling Macron, pampered Trudeau, or brain-dead Biden in the same circumstances? And that is absolutely true, right? None of those three people would have the fortitude of Zelensky, that is for sure. It certainly wasn't the response by Afghanistan's former president Ashraf Ghani, who jumped on a US helicopter full of cash out of Kabul last year before it was even officially confirmed the Taliban were nearby. Oh my god, he doesn't give a shit about anyone he represented either. No wonder Boris Johnson remarked after a recent phone call for Zelensky, Jesus, that guy is brave. No kidding, Boris, you would never have the fortitude to do that either. Because be in no doubt the lives of Zelensky, his screenwriter wife Olena Zelensky, and two children, daughter Alexandra and son Kirill, are now unquestionably on the line. You can imagine if they're caught, um, they probably won't be seen again ever. They're Putin's number one targets with the death order being given to 400 brutal Russian mercenaries currently already operating in the city who have expressed orders from Kremlin to assassinate Zelensky. In a twist, no scriptwriter could have predicted Zelensky, once a comic star in Russia, the country now out to kill him, has become the world's heroic leaning man. At Zelensky's career in showbiz, 
He also won the local version of the Strictly Come Dancing and is the Ukrainian voice of Paddington. Oh, wow. That has helped Ukraine win the propaganda efforts hand down. His powerful oratory via official channels and social media have already changed the course of this conflict. Indeed, some of his speeches over the past week have been so powerful that TV translators have had to stop talking because they can't contain their emotions. Absolutely amazing. There was a savage taught to Putin. When you attack us, you will see our faces, not our backs. Wow, what an amazing thing to say. Or his address at the Munich Security Conference on February 19, when he helped the world wake up to the upcoming horrors by saying, when a bomb credit appears in a school playground, children have a question. Has the world forgotten the mistakes of the 20th century? Indifference makes you an accomplice. Absolutely true, Zelensky. And when the Rus Russian disinformation campaign suggested Zelensky had fled the capital, he simply took his mobile phone to the streets and made a selfie video to reassure his people he wasn't going anywhere. We're all here, our military is here, citizens and society are here, we're all here defending our independence, our country, we will stay this way, he insisted. Then there's the video call with the EU leaders, reluctant to enter the conflict soon after Russian invasion, where he warned them, this might be the last time you see me alive. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. There are all sorts of powerful lines that could have been uttered by his character Vasil Petrovich Holoborodko in the TV series Servant of the People, which ended in 2019, where his character, a teacher, became president after a rant he made about corruption went viral after being posted on the internet by his students. As politicians around the world, from sleepy Joe Biden to Mr. Blackface authoritarian Justin Trudeau, become more of a joke after they take office, Zelensky morphed from comedian to statesman over the course of just a few weeks. And Justin Trudeau is more like Putin than um, anyone else, thinking about all the authoritarian things that he's actually doing. Compare Zelensky's rhetoric to that of Britain's MI6 chief Richard Moore. Moore has spent the crisis talking about gay rights for some unknown reason, unfathomably tweeting. With the tragedy and destruction unfolding so distressingly in Ukraine, we should remember that the values and hard-won freedoms that distinguish us from Putin, none more than LGBT plus rights. Why would you bring that into it with talking about the rights of all people? Oh man, these woke idiot people in um, government power are just ridiculous. What the F? No wonder Putin and China's Jinping continue to treat us with such disdain. But in Hardman Zelensky, dressed in his green military fatigue, showing off a body once toned on Dancing with the Stars, Putin has encountered a far tougher opponent. His authenticity and ability to speak directly to Russians in their language has convinced many to support his cause, helping lead to large illegal anti-war protests on the streets of Moscow and St. Petersburg. That's pretty amazing that there are protests anti-war protests in Russia because if those people get rounded up by the police they're probably not going to be seen again either so that's pretty amazing. Zelensky's personal story has also helped repudiate, repudiate Putin's propaganda campaign that the first illegal invasion of a sovereign country by a superpower in 80 years is all down to ridding Ukraine of Nazis. He's from his Jewish family and his grandfather Simon Ivanovich was only one of his four brothers to survive the Holocaust with the others killed by the Nazis. As incredulous Zelensky has pointed out, how can I be a Nazi? Explain it to my grandfather who went through the entire war in the infantry of the Soviet army and died a colonel and in, in an independent Ukraine. Zelensky, most famous before the war for starring in that infamous phone call with Donald Trump that resulted in the US president's political impeachment in the House, had been down in the polls before Putin decided to go to war with Ukraine, having been unable to stamp out the country's rampant corruption as promised. His close relation with the billionaire oligarch Ihor Kolomo Kolomoisky raised eyebrows and critics believe he surrendered himself with too many pro-Russian anti-Western advisers who may have wrongly convinced him that war could be averted despite intelligence from the UK and US to the contrary. But none of that matters now. Leaders are judged by history and their actions in wartime. Yep, that's absolutely correct. And Zelensky's has been highly effective garnering tougher sanctions, more military supplies and piling the pressure on the West to man the hell up and stop appeasing Putin. That's what the West needs to do, especially the weak New Zealand government um, who can't even bring themselves to do sanctions against Russia because they have legislated, or well, we have in legislation, 
that um, we can only do sanctions which are approved by the UN. <laughs> of course, Russia's on the UN, so they're not going to approve sanctions against themselves, which is ridiculous. Like Donald Trump, before him, he has authenticity. So lacking in our modern day politicians seem to have become paranoid, scripted robots. So this is the thing, right? Any people who have authenticity that aren't from um, the political swamp, then um, they get taken to task by the biased media, which um, try to get rid of them. Donald Trump is one, and obviously Zelensky um, met some of that as well. Biden couldn't even get through a press conference on the conflict without breaking into inappropriate smirks, for God's sakes. Zelensky is rightly now a global hero, but whether he survives the war is impossible to predict, given Putin, who runs a well-oiled international killing machine, wants him dead. That is so sad. Um, Zelensky just seems like an amazing person, and to think that he might be assassinated by this monster Putin is just incredible. Perhaps what's most heartwarming is that Zelensky never needed to enter politics. He had national superstardom, millions in the bank, luxury village, and a highly successful career in Russia until he donated money to help support the Ukrainian army in 2014. Zelensky once said, you don't need experience to be president, you just need to be a decent human being. Um, and that's a lot of things that some of these leaders, uh, leaders could be. Thinking of you, Trudeau and Biden, and it's that innate decency which which is why he'd rather die alongside his citizens in Kiev rather than cut and run on a US helicopter. I pray that this inspirational figure can lead Ukraine out of this quagmire. The world will be a better place for it. Amen to that, Dan Wooten. Um, all my thoughts and wishes go to people in Ukraine and Zelensky and his family. I really hope that we can come out of this and you don't lose your lives and we will be able to see you take um, Ukraine into the future. Um, what an amazing article from Dan Wooten. Uh, really loved how he's written that. Um, learned some things about uh, Zelensky. And um, it's good to compare him against all of the weak leaders in the West who don't give a shit about any of the people in their countries. Anyway, that's it from me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, you're welcome. Give it a thumbs down. And if you like my content, please subscribe as well. Anyway, hopefully I'll catch you in the next video.